housing. This one is for the M50, which is currently being used to video this, because that's my now main video camera, and going to be used for shooting in the surf when I get around to it. Um, it was a toss-up between this and Aquatec, and I went with this purely on budget. It's something like 600 US dollars, which works out like 400 and something pounds. Um, the equivalent for the 7D for from Aquatec, or for the lesser version, so like getting a 100D or the 80D or something, is 700 upwards, sort of 600 upwards. So just based on the budget of what I had at the time, this was the option to go with. Um, it's quite sturdy, it's very, it's got a good feel to it, it's a very solid, it is plastic, but it's very solid, very thick plastic, so I'm not worried there. All the controls on the back, which is nice. You've got all your menu buttons for the M50, uh, control dial, shutter trigger, video, and the on and off switch. Um, focus, uh, not focus ring, because it put it on auto when you're in the water, makes more sense. Um, what's it called? Focal length uh, from the 15 to 44, which is on the body currently. This one is made, or it's Mekon, Mycon or something, I, I couldn't read the name of where this comes from, but this one's branded off by Sea Frogs, there you go. Which I thought was a funny name for the camera. This isn't designed, I don't think, specifically to be surf housing, but as long as I'm not in too heavy a waves, it should work perfectly fine. It's got a nice big port on the front for the 15mm uh, zoom length got a nice little viewfinder bit on the back I'm trying to work out how to have the viewfinder and the monitor screen for this working at the same time I can use the viewfinder hole but I think in the water when you're trying to swim and taking photos or even just that it's really easy just to look through the back of the camera and shoot what you're looking at uh, I really like the clips on it they feel a lot sturdier than what I have been using in terms of that dive bag so these clips they've got a little trigger and they pop down um shutter button's fine all the dials work nicely i've dry tested it and sort of a uh, towel and yeah put a towel in there and dunked it in the water for a little bit and it's airtight it's even got a valve there so when you do do diving when you do go for some diving you can make it less pressurised because apparently this is quite a floaty one it's quite big in terms of space that's left over from the camera so it floats a bit yeah I did buy a handle for it but I've discovered in my rush and excitement of buying this is why you need to think a bit more when you buy things it's ever so slightly the wrong handle in that that's where the threads go and that's where the handle is so that was a bit daft it still works and I'm still going to put it on whilst I'm there. I've got the, at the moment, little leash thing they've got with it. So I'm going to have that wrap it around this and the handle and attach it to the base of this and my wrist. But I'm going to look at getting a proper sort of like bodyboard leash for it so it doesn't just travel away. As I said, it floats so it's not the sinking that I'm worried about, it's it floating away and being for the sharks and the fish. Issue from sea frogs or from Meccan the company themselves, it's just a ever so slight, not manufacturing fault either, but just the rubber on the frame that holds this was cut like a mil too short, like a fraction of a length that originally made the um, shutter button only autofocus, which isn't helpful for shooting or whilst you're in the water bobbing along as you can't correct it very well. So under one of the rubber panels that's about there, I've just taped around it again to give it that tiny bit more pressure on it, which is quite a small thing really, but when you've spent the money to have the housing and it's not quite working right, it is a bit of a disheartening moment. 
So, dry tested this. Gonna go chuck the camera in it at some point this week. I need to plan out my days in a bit. So again, this is another video that goes from one day to the next, to another day, to another day. But I've got a few more days off, half term, which is the upside. Put the camera in this and go and shoot in a few lakes and ponds just to practice. Um, and then heading into the new year, 2021, as long as COVID doesn't lock everything down again, I think I'll uh, go for a swim with it. Back down to Broadstairs. I've got a few days that I can book to go to other places and just snap away. I will say it's very clear. It's a lot the plastic and like port lens on it is a lot clearer and a lot nicer than the die pack bags that I was using. Die pack bags are still very good. I really did like them. It worked perfectly fine for ages. It just dried up crumbled away um, where this just from the feel of it and the weight of it I think it's going to last me a lot better but that's all time to tell and time to see it does come with o-rings already in the cameras and ports as well as having like a spare and the grease you need to do to clean it every now and again yeah overall very happy so far just need to go test it out So I don't know how well the audio is going to sound here. I've just photographed and videoed in the river and run out of battery, so I've changed this over. Nice fresh battery. Um, but my legs are freezing, toes are going to fall off. So I've changed my wellies, put my trainers back on and just going to go out and catch a few more autumnal photographs and then, autumnal photos, and then I'll probably head back home. So the other thing, look at this, the wind's a bit up and about, so I walk by the trees. Um, the other thing I was going to talk about today, or start off talking about in this video, talking about in this video, was the GoPro 7. Um, although I've been a bit daft, and did a little recording earlier, and left it on in my pocket. So it went over like the space of an hour or two it went from full charge to about seven which it, it lasted about as much as it should do being on and off but when you want to talk about something and you can't show it and can't work with it it's a bit of a pain for now we'll just stick with talking about the housing which so far I've loved using it's worked really well um, the company that made it has gotten back to me on because I did email them saying I was a bit disappointed about the fact that it was a millimetre or so out and that the shutter button wouldn't work and the two suggestions they gave were a bit of mechanical work in terms of unscrew the shutter button, tighten it or loosen it until it works which I'm not an engineer not 100% sure of how that would work and how that would affect the camera, so I didn't do that. Um, if you're a bit more confident with doing so and you're having the same issue, that was their recommendation. The other one that they recommend or suggested doing, which I'd already surmised myself, was tape up or add something to the bottom, uh, sponges, padding, rubber, whatever you want to call it, just to bump it up that last little bit. So, still helpful, still got the job done, but product, I really like it. As an issue, I'm a bit disappointed, but it hasn't actually affected how the camera works or how you know, the user friendliness or user ability of the camera and the 
housing. Uh, on my test today, using it, it's worked good enough. The issues were more temperature and um, fish than actually dealing with the camera as a problem. So overall, 10 out of 10 for that.